video was brought to you by G2A.com for cheap games, MSP, and PSN codes. And powered by Elgato Gaming. For the best gameplay capture out there, pick up an Elgato capture card today. Links in the description. Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbox here, and welcome to another future 2022 World Cup team video. And today, finally, we are going to be taking a look at Australia. And for those of you that somehow don't know, yes, of course, I am an Australian myself. I was born here, raised here. I'm probably going to die here as well, so there you go. We had to do Australia at some point. I did want to get, you know, some of the bigger clubs out of the way, or should I say some of the bigger nations out of the way, some of the real heavy hitters when it comes to world football. But I tell you what, we've definitely got our own players, of course, as well. We've got a decent future, hopefully at least down the track. And let's take a look at our team in 2022. And so here is the side. And again, don't expect 80s in every single area. I don't think... Uh, EA Sports at least have us rated that highly, but still, that's just their fault. Obviously, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. But anyway, we've got a very good defense, decent, and again, just taking it all into consideration. A midfield with 4 3 3 formation. We've got Matt Leckie on the left hand side, Jamie McLaren, who's really popped up big this season, and of course, Al Mobile out on the right hand side, of course, a real rapid winger, of course, he's sensational. Decent bench as well, Langrak, Curtis Good, who's a Newcastle boy, Berridge, Antonis as well, and a bunch of others, Ta Tommy Orr, is, of course, Adam Taggart spent a little bit of time at Fulham as well, and then you've got a couple of other players. I've actually got a regen or some newly created player in there that technically shouldn't be in there. I made a mistake. I decided that I wasn't going to go with any uh, you know, recreated players, but this Jason Smith dude, who I'm pretty confident is not a real player, but anyway, we've still got plenty of other great players. Rogic, of course, Aaron Moy, only 76 rated. I'd almost have him higher rated right now. He's in that good form, and that might be a bit biased, but Matthew Ryan's the only player in the team that is 80 rated, and a couple of players that came close. We've got guys like Cameron Burgess, uh, and a few other players that are pretty low rated right now at the moment that have really shot up, but again, as you can see, as we go down the nation pool, we don't have an extreme amount of players that are even up in the 70s so it's a bit disappointing and even then there are some players with very good potential that have just gone nowhere and I'm not sure why whether it's the league they play in or or whatever but there's definitely a lot of players that I expect to be a lot better guys like um I think you even saw there Anthony Casares maybe should have at least got a bit of a but maybe a bit better potential considering the interest or now that the fact that he's owned by Man City but for whatever reason that's what we've got I think I can honestly appreciate that team as an Australian and as a football fan. I would probably take that. That's not bad. You definitely want to see maybe a slightly higher overall side, a better rated team, obviously, because, you know, if you're going to go up with, uh, if you're going to go up against a nation like France, which is what we're doing right now, it's going to be a tough ask going against a team that has that many quality players. But again, we've had plenty of players of our own that have really shot up, done quite well, played in some pretty good leagues, and hopefully you never know. I'm, I'm still waiting to see that one Aussie player that comes out of nowhere, or maybe not necessarily out of nowhere, but just goes and dominates, maybe not dominates, but at least does super well in Europe, like a Harry Kuehl, a Tim Cahill. We haven't had one of those players, or at least one of those players of that sort of a magnitude or that sort of level for a while now. Even going down the track, you think of someone like Mark Viduka. It would be great to see someone like that. Maybe this man, Aaron Moy, you never know, as he took a long shot from distance, maybe just inside 30 yards or just outside the box. Unfortunately, couldn't curl it back in, but... Again, it was always going to be a bit difficult. I think um, what I might do is because, as again, there's a bit of a scrap and it looks like we were somehow not going to concede. Sainsbury with a good block in the end. But I'm going to go through a couple of players that have obviously retired that are no longer in the team and a few players that have, uh, I, in, my, in my honest opinion, I thought were unfortunate to miss out. Some of the guys that have missed out or gone down in their overall or just straight up retired guys like his again, sorry, I'll get back on track, but Jamie McLaren taking a shot, nearly pulling off a goal, but Aaron Moy whipping in a delivery and a good header, rising high, scoring the goal, Tommy Rogic. That's what we'll take. Absolutely beautiful. But anyway, a few players that I thought just missed out, unfortunately, were Mille Jedinak, Tim K, who obviously would be long gone. Uh, let's see, who else? I think there'd be uh, Luke Wilshere as well, maybe Matthew Spiranovic. Spiranovic, I thought, maybe still could have made it into this team, but no. Matt Mackay's gone, Dario Vitisic who's probably not really one there either. And again, Matt Ryan probably could have saved that shot, but unfortunately not that time. Eugene Galekovic, Tarek Elrich, maybe a few other players as well like that, unfortunate. And then there's plenty of players that were a little bit uh, younger or have pretty decent potentials that I thought could have made it into the side. As again, Tommy Orr scores an absolutely banging effort. It was a bit weird though. It was, uh, it was like, uh, I think it was Jamie McLaren and I'm not sure who the defender was. It just collided with each other. The ball went astray. Tommy Orr just went and snapped it up and put in an absolutely banging effort. But again, a few players I thought maybe unlucky to miss out or to not get to their potential guys like Petratos maybe for, of course, I believe it's uh, Perth Glory anyway, but a big, ridiculous, insane cross by the French by whoever that was whipping it in into Antoine Griezmann. Insane stuff there, but guys like him, Jimmy Jago, of course, uh, Brandon Borello as well as one, maybe Daniel De Silva or Daniel De Silva was good. 
uh, Mount, Kamau, Goodwin, all these other players as well. We had a gold, maybe a, a potential winner given for some reason uh, either offside or a foul or whatever the hell that was. I thought if that had counted, we would have gone on to win, but I'm pretty much just giving it away. There's no time left. We ended up drawing this game 2-2, but yeah, there were a few players that I thought maybe could have been a shot of getting in the side, but unfortunately, for whatever reason, just missed out. But in the end, I'm pretty happy with the team that we got. Let me know, guys. Do you reckon that's an accurate, uh, a pretty accurate team, what Australia will be sending to the World Cup in 2022? And until next time, my name's Mars Bucks. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and have a good one. Bye-bye.